Minnesota, a beautiful state known for its lakes, friendly people, and of course, hockey. And if you can stand the freezing cold winters, it's a pretty great place to live. There's five national parks, a bunch of state parks, and over a jillion lakes. You never run out of things to do outdoors, I'll tell you. And if you're not much for hiking, biking, fishing, and everything else they do outside, there's also the largest mall in the world. It's not really that exciting, but it's something to do. You'd be hard-pressed to find anybody living in the state who doesn't love it here. Minnesotans love Minnesota, and they're not afraid to tell you that. I'll tell you that. But let's face it, there's bad places to live in every state, right? Now, in order to look at the worst places to live in Minnesota, we got to look at data and opinion, right? If you look at the places in Minnesota that have the worst crime and the worst schools where it's just ghetto and run down, that's what we're going to look at. Plus, a lot of people in Minnesota have been sending me emails and comments telling me about how bad places are where they live, especially one city in particular that I think you won't be surprised about. But let's get started. It's time to look at the worst places you can live in the state of Minnesota. We begin our tour of the worst places to live in Minnesota with a stop in Albert Lee, home to about 18,000 people. Now you might be like, where in the hell is Albert Lee anyways? Well, it's in Freeborn County on I-35, way down by Iowa. Albert Lee actually has a lot to offer. They have a couple lakes, some nice parks, a whole bunch of shops and restaurants, and even a performing arts center. But unfortunately, the city's crime and economic woes are bad and growing fast. The unemployment rate's slightly higher than the national average. Those who do work are kind of broke. 14% of people here get welfare. And home values are the fourth worst in the state, which is probably good news for folks living here since most households earn way below the median income of $47,000. Safety is a huge issue here too. Folks have a 1 in 38 chance of being the victim of a property crime, so lock up your stuff down here. And the high school dropout rate's 15%, and those kids have a lot of distractions outside of school too because, like a lot of the Midwest, there's a growing drug problem in Albert Lee. One resident said, it's a small town surrounded by 50 miles of nothing. That's mean. But hey, you're only an hour from somewhere better, right? We travel an hour and a half north to find number nine, West St. Paul. Despite its name, West St. Paul is actually about 10 minutes south of the Twin Cities metro area across the Mississippi River. People living in West St. Paul are struggling economically. There's no doubt about that. One in seven people hasn't worked in a long time. And right now, everybody's hiring. There's no reason for anyone capable of working to be getting handouts. But still, in West St. Paul, one in seven people do just that for long extended times. Get a job. And while 19,700 people call West St. Paul home, it's just five square miles big. So with everybody crammed together, it's no wonder crime rate's so high. In fact, it's 200% above the national average. The good news, well, most of that's property crime. The bad news, you have a 1 in 14 chance of having your stuff stolen or burned every year you call West St. Paul your home, which you certainly should not. So what are the perks to living here? Well, the river's beautiful. There's some great parks and your commute into the city is a breeze. At number eight, St. Cloud, located about 60 miles northwest of the Twin Cities. It's in Stearns County and there's 68,000 people there. The future of St. Cloud is very cloudy. That's because this is one of the poorest cities in this whole state. Folks living here say it's a revolving door job market, and it shows. It has one of the highest unemployment rates in the state, with more than 7% of people out of work, and almost one in four people here lives below the poverty line. How is that possible in a great state like this? And then there's the safety concerns. The crime is not the worst in the state here, but it's far from ideal at 62% above the national average. St. Cloud has the highest rate of rape cases in the state. And overall, residents have a 1 in 229 chance of being violently attacked. You're also going to make sure you lock your doors because your chances of being robbed are 1 in 28. So what's good about living in St. Cloud? Well, you have easy access to really good health care. There's plenty of parks and lakes and bike trails. And they have a Val's, a little burger joint with french fries that are to die for. Ah, Val. At number 7, Brainerd, a small city in central Minnesota. It's over in Crow Wing County. It's a little place that only has about 13,000 people. Brainerd's full of small town charm and surrounded by some of the best natural scenery in the state. But dig a little deeper and there's not much beauty here. Now the unemployment rate's not the issue in Brainerd like it is in some of the other places on this list. But the poverty levels are skyrocketing. 
One in four people here collect welfare or other government assistance. What the hell? And for being such a small city, Brainerd has a surprisingly high crime rate that's 57% above the national average. People living here have a 1 in 213 chance of being violently attacked every year and a 1 in 29 chance of being robbed. So much for that small town vibe. Plus, people living here complain that there's not much diversity, the weather's terrible, well, it's Minnesota, and this is where business comes to die. What the hell, Brainerd? At number six, Virginia, located way up about an hour's drive even north of Duluth. About 8,500 people call Virginia home. Famous winemaker Robert Mondavi was born here, and we're guessing today's residents have to drink a lot of that wine to forget about how terrible their hometown is. No, that's mean. But this Iron Range town is struggling right now. Of course, the iron jobs and all the blue collar stuff that was going on up there is dissipating, and that's a big reason why. Virginia's seen its population shrink 5% over the last 10 years. The crime rate here is the 25th highest in the state, so it's not a terrible place, but the meth and the heroin addicts that are walking around all day and night, that sucks. A ton of people are out of work here, and more than a third of households make less than 25000 a year. It also has the highest divorce rate in the state in Virginia, and that's just terrible too. The plus side of living in Virginia, you can buy a house here for just $92,000, but I don't know why you'd want to. To be fair, it's not all negative. The public schools in Virginia are actually decent when you look at the amount of money they spend on the kids and teachers and after school activities. So at least there's that. And there's also plenty of outdoor stuff to do. And Virginia does have a lot of friendly people. I just wouldn't move there. St. Paul, what? That's right. In case you didn't know, this is one of the twin cities that make up Minnesota's urban area. You probably knew that, but if you're not from here, you might not. You could say it's the better twin, at least politically, and the way they run the place, but it's far from wonderful here. Nearly 305,000 people call St. Paul home, and being a big city, people living up here can enjoy a lot of advantages like good schools, museums, restaurants, and diversity, but there's some major drawbacks to living in a big city like St. Paul. A skyrocketing crime rate and a high cost of living make St. Paul way less desirable than some other places in Minnesota. The crime rate's about 70% above the U.S. normal, with people living here having a 1 in 28 chance of being the victim of a property crime and a 1 in 177 chance of being violently attacked. Meanwhile, the cost of living's high for this state. The median home value is $208,000 which is a tough mortgage, and the median income is just $57,000, and 20% of people are living below the poverty line. People in the Northeast are like, 200 k for a home is expensive? I need to get out of Massachusetts. But yeah, that kind of is expensive for Minnesota. But again, there's some definite perks to living here, including the Minnesota State Fairs here, if that's your thing. This might not be a surprise, but number four is Brooklyn Center. It's a North Minneapolis suburb. Some people are probably like, Brooklyn Center is only four? Why isn't it one? There's 30,000 people here. Brooklyn Center has a strong housing market, a lot of diversity and access to a bunch of amenities. So why did it make our list? Because it's bad here, that's why. For starters, Brooklyn Center has a really weak school system. Only 15% of high school kids are proficient in math and only 20% are reading at the correct level. On top of that, 14% of kids never finish high school and 8% never make it past ninth grade. One in 10 kids here leaves school after junior high. What the hell? And this is our damn future? And when you have a bunch of dropouts, you're going to have a bunch of crime. The crime rate runs 70% above the U.S. average. It's almost all property crimes, but there's a lot of them. Get this. If you live in Brooklyn Center for a year, you'd have a 1 in 15 chance of being robbed. That's pretty much somebody from every other house. If you can deal with the terrible schools and the rising crime rate, there's plenty of fun things to do in Brooklyn Center like biking or hiking the Shingle Creek Trail or taking a journey back in time to the 50s grill where you can enjoy an old-time malt and chicken pot pie and forget that you live in Brooklyn Center. At number three, we travel about three and a half hours north to find Bemidji. It's way out in the middle of nowhere in between a bunch of Native American reservations. There's only 15,000 people here, but Bemidji is one of the most dangerous places to live in Minnesota. It might seem crazy that such a small town could be so dangerous, but the crime rate in Bemidji is 230% above the national average. That also includes a 1 in 13 chance of being the victim of a robbery. And Bemidji is the third most violent place in the whole state, with aggravated assaults happening more than once a week on average. What the hell's going on in Bemidji way up in the middle of nowhere? I mean, it's probably a result of the bad economy here. People living in Bemidji are struggling. 
one in 15 people here hasn't worked in like forever now, and the ones who do have low paying jobs. Median income here is only 32K a year. That doesn't go very far to Minnesota, even though the cost of living here is low. I mean, a third of Bemidjians are on welfare, and a quarter of households make less than 15,000 a year? How is that possible today? And how is that possible in a great state like Minnesota? So while Bemidji might be famous for the setting of Fargo, and as the home of the Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox big statue thing, if you value your safety, and like to have nice things, and don't want to have your wallet stolen, steer clear of Bemidji, and that's sad. And number two is Waite Park, which is a suburb of St. Cloud, which we already talked about. It's a really teeny place. There's like seven or 8,000 people here. It's kind of shocking to hear that Waite Park has the most crime per capita of all places in Minnesota. This little teeny place is the most dangerous place in the whole state. The violent crime rate here is 252% above the national average. The main issue is property crimes. One in 12 residents is the victim of a robbery every year. On average, two cars a month are stolen here, which is a lot for such a small little place. If you're looking for the bright side, most of the property crimes are just larcenies, which makes sense for a city with so much retail. But who wants to live in a place where people are stealing from stores and breaking into parked cars all the time? What the hell? A lot of people here are poor and uneducated, and that's part of the reason there's so much petty crime. The median income here is 41 k and a quarter of residents live below the poverty line. And get this, 18% of adults never finished high school, and 11% are walking around with just an 8th grade education. No wonder there's so many problems in Waite Park. Now, if you're forced to live here, there's plenty of outdoor activities like the Quarry Park and Nature Preserve, where you're just hiking and biking and picnicking and fishing and swimming and rock climbing and all the other stuff people in Minnesota like to do outside. And the worst place to live in Minnesota is, no surprise, Minneapolis. Of course, Minneapolis has all the problems you'd expect in any big city. But back in the day, it probably wouldn't have topped our list. This place has gone down the toilet in the last couple years, and a lot of people are moving out because of all the rioting here that destroyed the businesses and the heart and soul of much of the surrounding area. Stores were destroyed, neighborhoods were burned down, and people were killed. There's large parts of Minneapolis that'll never come back. Now, over time, a bunch of cities in the U.S. have been destroyed by riots, and they were never the same. Minneapolis will never be the same again. That's what happens when you have a bunch of woke people destroying their own community. Now it'll never be the same. Of course, it's pretty dangerous here and growing. I mean, the north end of town's just a dump. The crime rate here is 120% above the national average. Minneapolis has about a murder a week, and it has the fourth highest rape cases in the state. People have a 1 in 108 chance of being the victim of a violent crime here. And lock your doors, because it also has the highest burglary rate in the state, but it's a big city, what do you expect? And if the crime doesn't send you running, the cost of living might. Affordability is becoming a problem here. And there's homeless people all over, and drug use all over. This place is going downhill. The median house value is 250 k and the cost of rent here is going up, and 20% of people live below the poverty line. It's just not a good combination. It's hard to see past the racial tension and the crime, which is sad because Minneapolis does have a ton of pluses. I mean, there's gorgeous parks and lakes. There's a lot of culture here. It has some excellent restaurants and shops, but the negatives far outweigh the positives, and who knows what's going to happen in the near future. I mean, one more riot here, and a bunch of other stuff's going to burn down and be destroyed forever. I wouldn't move here. And there you have it. The worst cities to live in Minnesota. These are all the places in the state where crime's really high, people are broke, schools are bad, and there's a lot of woke people. But really, these places are kind of the exception in the land of a million lakes. Overall, Minnesota's a great place to live if you can handle the cold. And if you're looking for some of the best places to live in Minnesota, it's going to be basically a lot of the western Minneapolis suburbs. Places like Edina, Chanhazen, Minnetonka, kind of this whole giant area over here. That's pretty much the best place to live, unless you want to live way out in the sticks. And of course, in today's world, a lot more people are doing just that. This is Minnesota. It's a bunch of snow and ice hockey. From the way up north, they, there's a bunch of lakes in this story. Puck drop, everyone sits down to watch. Sun's up, time to count the fish you caught. Here in Minnesota, you're gonna have a really lame time. You'll have a lame time. You'll have a lame old time. Yeah. Hey guys, so if anything I just talked about upset you or made you sad or mad, well then do something about it. 
Call your local leaders and demand change. Chip in and help those in need. Make your community better. Because communities don't get better without hard work and determination. America's a great place. It just needs some more love and pride. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation.